Now I'm joined by a Glencore bondholder. Felix Freund is a fixed income fund manager at Union Investment, which actually has about $250 billion worth of assets. He joins me live now from Frankfurt. Thank you so much for speaking to us. So I actually wanted to start by asking you about the timing of this share sale. What is the motivation to change from a private partnership to a public listed company? Yeah, I think there are, there are several reasons to uh, to the IPO for Glencore. One lies within the um, the ownership structure. Um, before the IPO, the, the company was owned by 500 partners, and uh, effectively, if the um, partners would retire or leave the company, they could could have cashed out after a couple of years, uh, which means that uh, the equity base could have been shrinking. And another reason is certainly uh, the growth strategy of the company. Um, Glencore has grown uh, uh, very much uh, in the last decade, buying assets, buying uh, uh, stakes in other companies, and I think they reached a point where they are limited with their uh, private partnership in terms of funding these, these growth strategy. And the third is uh, certainly the reason that they, they need to have an acquisition currency um, in order to proceed uh, potential M&A deals in the future. So uh, these are, I think, the main reasons for the IPO. And, you know, a lot of analysts had been voicing some concern because of the decline in commodities that we saw in the first week of May. But what, where does Glencore have an advantage over some of its rivals, some of its uh, commodity company competitors? Talk to me a little bit about its business model. Yeah, I think the business model of, of Glencore is a little bit unique or different to, to other mining companies because it uh, combines mining assets uh, with a huge physical trading operation. And um, that eff effectively means the, um, the mining assets are very, have a very high operating leverage towards volume and price, mm. price fluctuations, whereas the trading business is more, uh, more a volume game and benefits from price volatility or price differences yeah. or, uh, across the world. Um, uh, for, for certain commodities, but it's not so much dependent on high prices. So effectively yeah. what it does is it, it kind of uh, diversifies uh, their earnings a little bit in terms of, of the price fluctuations. You could, you could have seen this in, a, in the financial crisis where the, the operating profit out of the industrial assets uh, dropped very heavily and um, the trading business actually remained uh, pretty resilient in terms of, of their, their earnings they could yeah, Get so it's, it's, it. it's quite unique in that it, it, not a, it combines raw material production from, uh, uh, with commodities trading, which I guess means that it actually benefits from market volatility from what you're saying. And you were speaking about growth, expansion, what they're going to use the funds for. What is the next step for Glencore? We've heard a lot about a potential merger with Extrata. Yeah, first of all, I think they, they have already commented what they uh, would use the proceeds of the IPO uh, for. It's, it's a mix of uh, uh, higher capex programs increasing the stake in the Kazakhstan Kazink uh, mining co company and probably a little bit for debt reduction. Um, but it, what's more interesting is probably the medium term outlook. Um, there's since I, I, I said is uh, the, the the share shares are uh, regarded as a as acquisition currency for for Glencore and they might might look for for a potential merger and acquisition and Extrata since they already hold a 35 percent stake in that company is is the uh, the most potential candidate in the near term.